because it's Friday, <laughs> Veterans Day, November 11th. Happy Veterans. Thank you to all of you who have supported this amazing country. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for our service. Happy Veterans Day. I think you were like going in to say your name and then maybe forgot your name for a second. It happens. It's Friday. <laughs> it's a Friday. It's been a long week, holidays, all the stuff, all the things. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another Title Talk on Friday. With yeah, Title Talk with Haley. Yeah, hey, 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 Ryan, we're here. It is. It is Happy Veterans Day, Friday, mid November, beautiful Mission Valley, San Diego, California. And we are talking about what's trending in San Diego real estate. Woo, the fall is upon us, huh? Cold nights and hot days, typical San Diego fall. I know, I'm like wearing a sweater and boots today, and it's actually like pretty warm out. But yeah, I mean, trending going into the holidays, things we, we were at an event last night, we were hearing a lot of whispers of people just saying, you know, they're really slowing down, they're kind of just gonna hold off till after the holidays, things like that. And so, we wanted to kind of take on what we see, what's trending, and talk a little bit about mindset, how to kind of shift that, and then, you know, what we can go into to kind of help get some momentum. Like, we hear all the time right now, my open house was so slow. I had, like, two people come through. So we have some ideas to kind of help you build some traction to get more momentum to get more people through. Absolutely. And, you know, there's very little substitute for face-to-face -face sales and interfacing with the customer on a face-to-face -face basis. There's nonverbal communication that's going on. There's so much value that you can provide just on connecting with mm -hmm. the person walking through the open house. So with scarce attendance at these open houses, it begs the question, how do we get people through the door? You know, and I mean, I, starting with the neighbors. There's farm techniques, there's farm information that we can provide. A farm is just a list of neighbors in a half mile, quarter mile, two mile radius, or in that inside the building downtown or in the complex for a condo to get those neighbors to come see, you know, what did the what did the Johnsons do? What did they paint? What flowers did they put out? How big is their pool mm -hmm. really? Like they want to come see the pad. Yeah. You know? Well, they want to know what's going on and they are curious. And so we wanted to give you some ideas because there's so much leverage in the open house in the face to face sales right now, like you said. And so what are ways to like actually reach out to these neighbors, how to get in contact with them? Because we have to have a strategy around open houses as well. A lot of us, it, a lot of salespeople, we just kind of will put the sale house, open house signs out on Saturday and Saturday morning. Wait, we'll wait, put wait, them wait, out wait. And Salespeople win it? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Only every time. And you know, there's no real strategy around it. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna door knock real quick in the morning, maybe try to hit the closest 20 neighbors and then, oh shoot, gotta go get the bagels, gotta go get the drinks, but, and then waiting on this to happen and gotta make sure all my signs get out and everybody can see them. So there's a lot of moving parts that can go on in just one day getting that open house. So if you give yourself some time, like if you know you're holding an open house on Saturday and Sunday or Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and you have all week to plan it, what are you going to be doing to get that traction to kind of, you know, we hear mega open houses, things like that. Tom Ferry talks about it. There's agents that do it. So what are you doing to get that in there? Well, you know, back when I started in 2001, way when the dinosaurs were running around, they had to go knock on doors or do leave behinds on doors and invite folks mm -hmm. or do handwritten notes or, God forbid, if you plan a, a postcard, inviting them to the open house. But the data exists now where you could do an email on Monday, letting the whole neighborhood know about your open house, a text on Wednesday, and maybe a call on Friday. Or and a voicemail drop, too. Don't oh forget yeah. about that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Huge. There's Slide Broadcast, an excellent third-party vendor that does a voice memo, voicemail delivery system to... 100 voicemails yeah. for people who live around. So there's ways to get the word out, and it, like we always talk about an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Well, just an ounce of preparation can get more bodies through mm -hmm. that open house and give you that sales opportunity. Yeah, and like I always talk about it as if we were an agent, and like I love the scripting of like, hey, this is Haley, and I'm just reaching out to you guys as the neighbors because we have your neighbor's house, the Johnson's, 123 Main Street. We're gonna be having an open house this weekend. And most buyers come through the neighbors, so we want to give you guys the opportunity in choosing your first neighbor before anybody else sees this. So bring your friends, family, anybody else who loves this area like you do, have them come by this weekend, and I'd love to chat with them. And hey, 
We're gonna have a lot of activity probably on the property. So if you've had any thoughts of selling as well, come on by. I'd love to chat with you. We have donuts, whatever it may be. We're gonna have croissant hot Yeah, blast, and you can drop sales. that as a voicemail blast these days with the data and be able to hit 200 people at a time. And then try this point, if you wanted to make calls behind it on these third party systems, they show you which numbers actually got delivered. So now you're just following up on your open house. You're just working for your sellers to hopefully let them know like, hey, th these are my systems, my protocol, or even the agent that you're doing the open house for, like they see a system like that, of course they're gonna let you work that on their open house. Yeah, they want more buyers on it. Yeah. Because a buyer right now, like we said a couple months ago, sellers were the paychecks, buyers are the paychecks. Well, you're you're now. Buying right now, you're getting paid. Yeah, so how, of course, if you bring a buyer to their listing, they're gonna be stoked on it. Well, you know, and look, it sounds like a lot of work, and oh, I don't wanna make calls, so look at it this way. You're working for your seller. If it's your listing and you're holding the house open, then you're working on behalf of that seller. So it can push you beyond that discomfort, that moment of I don't want to bang call to say, well, I gotta show up for my customer, right? Mm -hmm. And I would, um, you know, so what's trending is open houses. Look, I mean, Thanksgiving is in a couple weeks, right? Yeah. Two weeks from yesterday, is that right? Uh, don't remind uh, yes. me. The math doesn't math. I don't oh, do math. So. Uh, the math ain't math. <laughs> <today>. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. So sure, yeah. Let's go, let's so that, three weeks. So we're outside of two, just under two weeks to Thanksgiving. So people are gonna check it out. It's football. It's holidays, and so be the one that just shows up and has some consistent framework to your approach to an open house. So whether it's invites on the doors, and just do like twenty a day for three days leading up to the open house. Do some calls on Friday afternoon, maybe some door knocking right around the house. And uh, so you're wondering how does title fit into all this? Title can get you the ownership information in a farm package spreadsheet so you know who the neighbors are. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, do all the regular other stuff, like announce it on your social media channels, right? And your buyer pipeline or those loan officers that follow you on Facebook might say, oh my gosh, Susie Q's have holding an open house. I'm gonna bring my three borrowers that fit that area and price point to go see the open house. And then maybe call your loan officers and invite them to bring their borrowers. Or well, to get real ninja with it too, you can okay. do a boosted ad about your open house on Facebook. One of the agents here at Big Block did it and he got responses, people commenting like, oh my gosh, we'll be there. Like, and they were neighbors, not people. And this was out in his property in Oklahoma. Like, so this works everywhere. Like it, it's something that you can do to really target an area, you can still run boosted ads and throw five bucks at it for that week to build up the momentum to get at least that amount of eyeballs so you can show yeah. your sellers, agents that you're holding the open houses for, that kind of stuff that, okay, I'm working, I boosted this ad and I got over 3,000 views on eyeballs in this area on it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to tell the story and tell the story on a wide scale basis to get, because look, people have kids sports, people have family obligation, it's Saturday, is a whole obligation. So we get it, you're gonna tell 100 people and four might show up, but tell the story because you're putting that goodwill out there, you're working, and who knows what karma is gonna bring back or the universe will bring back when you put that messaging out there, it might just bring you a buyer. So that's what's trending on the open house front. We can help you with those strategies laid out in a bullet point system that makes it really easy for you and how title fits into that. And other tools like our app has some really cool flyers and graphics that are like done with yeah. custom break through a broker is a great app that you can use for that. So you don't even have to get into Canva and try to create your own flyer. There's so many wonderful mm -hmm. templates in there. Yeah, they're already pre-made. And then so that's just one kind of tactic to reach out to the neighbors. And you can also utilize the title units to be able to get top producing agents to get data of that area. Oh yeah. So if you have an open house in 92108, we could pull the, all the top buy side producing agents of 92108 and guess what? Reach out to those agents. Call them and say, hey Susie Q, I see you've had 20 buyers in this last year in this area. I'm having an open house this weekend in your same hood. So if you've had any buyers or anybody that's looking around, bring them by this weekend. I'd love to, love to talk to you about how we can put a deal together. I mean, what like do they say in psychology? The best predictor of future behavior is relevant past behavior. Right? Mm -hmm. So if this person has relevant past buyer history in the same zip code as your listing, then that's the best predictor that they probably are running around with a couple buyers 
right now, right? So that we were trying to think and scratch our heads, where are the buyers, right? Where are the buyers? Oh my gosh, turn over every stone. Well, buyers, agents have buyers, loan professionals have buyers, and then the MLS, if you're not aware, has a reverse prospecting feature where buyers, agents set up a gateway search for their buyer, and if your listing falls into their search, it will notify you through reverse prospecting. So for more information on that, hit us up, it's super simple, and it's a very effective way. We've had agents mm -hmm. go into escrow just by calling and saying, well, how far apart are we? Yeah. Let's get a view of that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing a lot of that, so it's a couple ideas for you on the open house front. The other way, is a lot of people are talking, the other thing we're seeing is a lot of people are talking about the obstacles presented by a high interest rate environment to the buyer, okay, and demand is waning, people are on the fence, the cost of borrowing is so high. So we, instead of like shining a big bright light on the obstacle or the problem or challenge, let's talk about the pathway to home ownership, right? There is still a pathway. People are still buying houses and houses are still trading. So how are they doing this right. with all these barbed wire fences and walls in the way? Well, the pathway is in a little bit more education in this market that the prices are low, but the rates are high, right? Yeah. Well, I think it's important, I was listening to a Tom Ferry podcast no this way. morning, no. as you weird, listen every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, <laughs> um, and he was interviewing an agent, and she was saying the same thing. Being educational right now is more value than ever provided to the consumer, because people need to know, if they're not ready to buy a house, they might not be ready. We can't force people and put them in a situation if they're not ready right now, but you can lay it out and give them the guideline to home ownership or the pathway of like, hey, this is where we're at right now. This yeah. is where we need to be. So this is how we can get you here. Exactly. And that's, it's in a conversation right now. It's just having that educational versus sale, like versus trying to close right now. People need to know like, okay, this is where you're at. Some people need credit repair. Some people need other things. So guide that pathway for them and give it to them in a sense that they can understand it of where they can go. I mean, it used to be a straight line to a low rate, mm -hmm. right? So there wasn't a whole lot of maneuvering and that's why there was so much demand and an influx of buyers. Now there's this big obstacle to work with called a high interest rate environment. So now you have to take a couple maneuvers around, under, through, etc., and educate the fact that we are gonna get a lower price. It's like, the half yearly sale at Nordstrom, right? Everything's half off, but your interest rate on your Nordstrom card is like 8%, like a not desirable percentage APR, right? Same thing, San Diego's on sale, but the cost of financing is a little out of whack right now. So you've got to live with those terms until we get to a lower interest rate environment where you can adjust the rate, but you can't adjust the sales price. Because what happens when rates come down again? Right. Prices are going to teeter totter back up, and you're going to be there's going to be a line around the block for inventory. It's going to go way down. You're going to have the same situation. So just factor that in when educating your buyer customers. And the other thing is where you used to have five buyers and two closed escrows, you might have 25 buyers and two closed escrows right now because the the pull through ratio is going to be a lot slimmer mm -hmm. because of this higher interest rate environment, and so. Cast a wider net, have a bigger pipeline, however you want to understand that. But basically, more at bat to get a base hit and a home run right now. Yep, and I think it's really important, especially right now, to stay consistent on that. To make sure you're doing your outreach, because that's the only way you're going to have that pipeline, is to consistently have that outreach. And we're not saying, you know, you have to go do a hundred things every single day, right. or, you know, every day. It's take it what fits for you but make sure you're doing it consistently every day or you know as much as you can fit it in and get that in because that's how you're going to keep your pipeline full especially during the holidays and then guess what we know holidays go into springtime and then goes into summer and we know people buy and sell a lot more during summer so don't you want to have your pipeline pretty full during that entire time oh my gosh <laughs> can you just do outreach and tell the story and do the normal holiday things and host the holiday parties and be top of mind with your people and that sets you up for a Q1 that is productive. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do those things consistently, then how can we expect consistent pipeline, right. consistent results? So the ones that are doing that are experiencing traction, they're getting engagement, and it, it stands to reason, right? If I make just 10 calls a day, or 10 knocks on a door a day, or visit 10 small businesses and talk to them about their real estate needs, or any number of things mm -hmm. you can do. But whatever it is that is your choice, your flavor of outreach, do it consistently. Do it like at least Monday through Friday, 
at, at some pace, at some cadence that works for you, and you don't go from the couch to the marathon like in a week, right? Make three calls to save past clients a day until it's five calls, and then it's seven, and then you mix in some colder people that maybe go to your Instagram, and you're like, ooh, I haven't talked to Betty Lou Sue since like before COVID, right? And like, oh, I'm gonna call Betty Lou Sue today. Is that three people, or is that one person? <laughs> you're online, I don't know, it's on you. Sorry, synapses aren't firing, it's mid-November, Friday morning. <laughs> so, you get what I'm saying, you get what I'm saying. Whatever it is, and, and stake your claim to the, once you hit your metrics, and I'm gonna do three of these, three of that, and three of that, do that, right? And right. then cast that story, and tell that story, and you're gonna attract people that need that solution. So, and we're, we're watching it, we're watching people have success with it, we continue to do and hit our metrics, and we have a steady flow, just because of the steady outreach. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mic yeah. drop. Oh, oh. So we want to help you guys with those consistent efforts, really help you guys build a strategy around your open houses, utilizing our data, it's helping you stay consistent, time walking, we, I think, mentioned that almost every other week, like, you have to get it in the calendar or it doesn't happen. So when you're doing these open houses, plan for it. Have it set up in days. Have it, okay, I'm doing it Friday, Monday I'm going to go door knocking. Tuesday, I'm gonna send an email. Wednesday, I'm gonna do a slide broadcast. Thursday, I'm gonna make some calls. Like, and guess what? It doesn't have to take you all day. All those things take sending an email. There's so many different mass email things you can use. You can hit us up on different ideas for that. But you can send that in 15, 20 minutes because you already made a pre-made flyer on Breakthrough Broker that took you 15, 20 minutes to make that you right. used a door knock. I mean, I'd say door knocking and the calls are your two biggest time things, but guess what? Those are kind of your two biggest money makers. Yeah. <laughs> like face to face and inviting and, and having conversations voice, right? and voice to voice to get face to face. So it really works. It yeah. really works. So that's how we want to help you guys strategize around this because we're in this too. We're in this market with you guys. We're in the trenches. We uh, just see different things and we want to bring those different ideas out to you guys. Yeah, and focusing, and that gives you metrics and it gives you activities. The worst thing about being in a, a challenging situation in a rut, in a pit, whatever you want to call it, whatever analogy, is not knowing what to do, mm -hmm. right? Because that's even, that just multiplies the fear, the anxiety, and kind of hopelessness yeah. over time, okay? So what's the best way to get out of it? Get into action. Do something, because something, when you do something, you're gonna get feedback. Yeah. You have cause, you have effect, right? There's an equal and opposite. Action creates momentum. Yes, right? absolutely. I mean, if we don't get momentum to get motivation, we have to have all of that because once we start getting momentum, we start getting more motivation and then we're like, all right, let's keep doing this. Let's keep it. And you know, I mentioned the other day, nobody wakes up wanting to go to the gym first thing. I mean, some crazy people do. There's like people that do that, or right? Like be one of them. But yeah. that's not the first thing on my mind that I want to do. But once I get there and start just doing a little bit of action and start stretching, start working up, and you're like, okay. I'm here, I've got this. And then you get the motivation because you're like starting putting on heavier weights, doing more cardio. You're like, okay, pushing yourself a little bit more. But you don't get that without starting action. Yeah. You can't, like you said, so you don't true. go sitting on the couch to go running a marathon. There's steps, there's things you have to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, and our brain is working against us because the more we stay inert or out of action, the more cortisol we get, which is what? The fear drug from our brain, that the chemical neurotransmitter that makes us scared. Okay, so but once you move into and lean into the fight, the brain says, wait a minute, we're doing something about this. Dopamine hit, this is good, keep doing this. Now we feel a little better. Yeah. And then like in your case, when you start working out, you get endorphins, which is the body's opiate. So now it doesn't hurt as much, and my brain's telling you this is good. Okay, let's go. I heard a great analogy today on another podcast, <laughs> weird. Um, it's all sorry, right. that's it's all, all right. I swear, but we, that's something that we're always in the car, we're driving, we're listening to podcasts to bring ideas of things we would do, or mindset things. And one of the mindset things he was talking about was, hey, imagine you're hiking through the redwoods, and you see the trail that hundreds of people go through, and it's beautifully carved out. There's no issues. You can walk through it, see all the sights, and it's gorgeous. But if you take a look at your right, and there's an unpathed trail, and you want to take that, you, it's not going to be easy the first time. You're gonna to have to whack down some weeds, you're gonna to have to get the machete, but if you do it over time, and as if I tap into Ryan's words and create those neuro pathways, breaking down, that path is gonna become easier to 
get through. And you're yeah. going to create the same path that 100 people walk down and it's smooth, but you can't just get there the first time you do it. Right. You create, you have to do it over and over, and that's where the consistency comes in, but that gets easier over time. Because your so, brain learns. Neuroplasticity is a thing. It's like, oh my gosh, wait, we've been taking this like front of the road, and here's the A freeway, which is grooved into my brain, but then this front of the road is kind of, and we, she's taking it more often, so the mm-hmm. brain says, wait, well, then we got to make this into like A freeway now, because we're using it more. Mm-hmm. So it adjusts, right? And that's basically an analogy for building a new habit. Yep, and exactly. in, the, in this environment, throw out your business plan. Throw out everything you think you know, and try 10 new things. Because you might say, yeah, I call these probate attorneys and they love me, mm-hmm. right? Well, you wouldn't find that out if you weren't open to trying something new. So just uh, that's kind of like what we're facing in our business. How we're responding to it is getting into the metrics, trying everything, uh, forgetting what we think we know, and trying everything, and then reminding ourselves that we're badasses. And I want to remind you, you're badasses. Don't forget what a badass you are. And you can move the needle. And we just had, how many conversations in this last 60 days that we had with agents that just forgot and lost their mojo because they weren't doing the things. And we met with Epiphany and she says, you know what, I just started doing all the things. I called these people, I posted this, and then next thing you know, she had three escrows and four buyers. And I'm like, well, how did you get from that to that? She's like, Ryan, I started doing all the things. Started doing the things. Started doing the things we talk about. Like, that's exactly it. It's yeah. that, it's so simple, it's like profound, it's crazy. So. I mean, do we have any final thoughts, any final words, anything we can help out with? That's tr- that's what's trending, and let's get out there and do it. We're doing a, uh, a turkey trot. So there's an Oceanside turkey trot. Morning up, Thanksgiving, get out there. Those look fun. The Lipsy family will be have turkey hats. I am not a turkey trotter on Thanksgiving, and no. my mom tries to force it. I'm oh, like, no. no. <laughs> that's why I'm not going there this year for Thanksgiving. I'm like, oh. if you're a turkey trot next year, last year, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Told me without asking, so. <laughs> but uh, in the 11th month, in the month of gratitude, it's 11, 11, 22. And if you're a numerology fan, that's like quite significant. But uh, happy Veterans Day to our veterans. We appreciate our freedom here. And that's all I got. Yeah. Anything else there? No, nope. I'm Haley. Ryan, hit us up for any ideas, anything we can help out with. We love helping you guys and assisting, and we're so grateful for you to be on your team. All right. So bye, guys. Bye.